Hey everybody. Robin Nolan will be join will be joining us in a second. Hey Brandon. How you doing, bro? Hey Sean. Hey Daniel. If you guys watch YouTube, you probably know Robin's face if you ever checked out how to play any Django he's dominating the webs here he is that's Adam uh, Robin Nolan oh gypsy jazz guitar secret never mind boom oh I don't think it's gonna let me add that let's see no nope. Robin I can just add you I can't add your page it won't give me the option but we'll talk about it. There he is. <laughs> how you doing, man? I'm doing good, bro. How are you doing? Great, great. You're over in the Netherlands, correct? Yeah, so um, and it's Amsterdam. I'm in my daughter's bedroom. The family are just relaxing in the uh, family <laughs> area. And I'm doing the, the, the guitar thing in, my, in the room here, talking to, to Danny. How are you doing? Doing great, man. It's yeah, yeah, yes. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... You're just as smiley as your videos. <laughs> I, I, that's my mantra, man. It, like the whole thing is if, if, if you actually be who you are and, and if somebody asks me a question I can't answer, I just say, ask Marvin, man. Like, uh. you know what I mean? It's like, like I, I'm just not going to bullshit anyone. Like if someone asks me to do that chromatic run, I'll just say, ask Danny, you know? Oh, dude, no, 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 it's not. It's not like so I'm just, uh, this, is just, this, is just, this is just me anyway, so find it easy like that that's awesome dude i mean i have to say that's like the first thing that like you know comes across with your videos it's like the vibe it's just like <laughs> like it's good yeah, you know yeah. I, it's happy i, I know Jew, you know jewish people we don't oftentimes we just complain and we're depressed a lot and it's like <laughs> I, I i understand i understand and yeah. uh it you know doing this thing it i think we talked about it last week it, it helps me too you know it's like it, it's a it's a beautiful thing to be able to go on, on the interwebs and communicate and reach people and actually help people, help people, you know, deep down. And that, that's a real gratifying that's feeling. Really so, big. you know what I mean? So, so when I hang up on these lessons and all these lives and all this stuff that I do, I actually feel totally energized and I get that energy. And then I know it's going to happen again. And here I am again talking to you and I have that energy. And it's like, it's a magical, you can't put your finger on it, but there's something going on. Which well, that's is really like, cool. It's an incredible thing. I think there's all sorts of like, you know, psychological like kind of studies that show that like people get a lot more from giving than from receiving, which is counterintuitive. But like that's anybody who plays music knows that that's what it's about. Right. It's like and I think all, a lot of times people will uh, attribute some sort of kind of ego fullness to like, you know, they see somebody on stage it's like he's showing off. But it's like it's not really showing off. It's giving. Right. Right. I, I think I think you're totally right. And when I'm playing, I'm I'm quite a sensitive person. And when I'm in my impros, and I'm I'm the last thing I'm thinking about is what I'm earning. Or, right. You know, the the, the right. thing I'm thinking about is the here and now, and trying to reach everyone in the room. You know, and it's it's a struggle, right? And it doesn't always work out. But, yeah. But well, uh, you know. that's what that's what we love about this improvised music, basically. You know, that's what I love about it. Yeah, that's wonderful. Let's, let's, let's start with a few like music things. So first of all, I notice right off the bat that like, you know, there's a few people in Gypsy. I just talked to Ollie yesterday. I know you saw that. And it's like, there's a few people who are pretty untraditional with their right hand technique. And you're definitely one of them, right? But you get a Gypsy sound and it's like, so how did that come about for you? Right. So um, it, it, you're completely accurate. It's it's not an orthodox technique at all. It's kind of like Pat Metheny cross with some, you know, it's it's like it's like if you look at the angle of my pick, for example, mm -hmm. after I've been playing for a while, it's like a left-hander's angle. So, it, you know, I'm basically, I'm not going, I'm not going that way. I'm uh -huh. I'm, I'm kind of going the other you're way. Going so up. The, yeah, yeah, right. So, so it's with, kind of like your finger grip. Is it like is it tip? It's to kind tip, of like it's it's, it's kind of like that because I've got this double jointed thumb. Yeah, uh, and that kind George of Benson thing. Right, right. Yeah, so it, <laughs> it puts you at a forty five degree angle. Up. Right. So exactly. So it's slicing like that. Yeah. And of, of course, you know, none of this is conscious. You know, I mean, I did get a couple of lessons where a guy was saying, "Dude, you got you, you should you should do you should change this," and I kind of like. 
I spent about 10 minutes thinking about how I might be able to do that. Then, I, you know, I, I didn't change and I've yeah. not changed anything really. So it's not, a, <laughs> it's not a conscious thing. And I know a lot of people, you know, obviously we understand that Django had this tech technique called gypsy picking or the restaurant mm -hmm. technique. And it's what those guys use, Stocklow and, and, and all those players when they play that style, yeah. use that technique. Um, and it's tough, you know, I mean, I, I encourage people if, if, if it works for them, like, I mean, I've, I've been checking out all your videos, man. It's like, yeah. for, for whatever reason, you're, you're a guy that's just like, oh yeah, that's how you do it. And, and it's, you're comfortable with that. And, it, well, and that's me, why you, right? I, I come from a different world. So I came from the fusion world and our technique, right. you know, I was completely a professional player before I even started playing gypsy stuff. And, right. and you know, in our world, we play so light that if you pick up an acoustic instrument, it's like an ant running on a fretboard, right? So it's like, I, I would ask myself, like, like, my technique was literally like this right. mumble of nothings, right? Even if you right. amplified, it wouldn't work on an acoustic. So whenever right. I did pick up an acoustic with the very light touch, it was like, I was just trying to make that a little bit harder, but it would never work, right? So right. I was... I had to build it from scratch. I'm assuming you probably started playing in a way that worked on acoustic. Yeah, that's right. Because, uh, you know, my parents were, were musicians and we had guitars around the house, acoustic guitars, actually like Gibson, you know, J45, those kind of guitars. So I was always playing with them and yeah, getting a sound out of an acoustic. And I think it's like, I, for whatever fluke or reason, I, I do get a sound out of it. Like when yeah. I'm sitting next to Paulus, who, who, whatever great guy you know with a great sound um i can get that sound but it's not the orthodox technique so sure um that's it's, it is an interesting point yeah <laughs> i mean if you if you can dream it you can get to it you know yeah that, that's some... really the thing about sound right you yeah dig for it i mean there's people who play with with perfect like restroom technique that something that looks perfect but they get a horrible sound too so it's that's it's right so i'm possible. yeah i don't want to compromise the sound for me it's about the sound and the groove uh, i'm less of a shredder kind of guy so i don't rely on just a blitz of notes to get my message across sure I'm trying to go deeper and use the resources i've got and one of those is kind of the sound and the the feel and the mood and uh, those kind of, of things course. that's the kind of player that I am, and some humor, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that really works. So how'd you get into gypsy jazz? Like, when did this come about for you? Yeah, so um, my father, this is before the internet, and I think it was, this is a film called uh, Django Legacy, mm -hmm. which you've got to watch. Just Google Django Legacy mm -hmm. or Django's Legacy, and it's uh, an English filmmaker made a film about Django and his legacy and that's where we first saw Stocklow and all these guys and all these players and um, that year that that was filmed it was filmed at Samoa Sassane the festival the Mecca mm -hmm. the place where all Django's people the gypsies have been going for years to celebrate his life and music and then around 90 or 91 I can't remember you know like normal Gajo people were also going and it, it became like a jazz festival and we heard about this place where um, this music was going down and, and Django's people were going to be there. And it was like so mysterious. And we drove through the night from England with a couple of buddies and my dad across That's the awesome. channel and then through the night to Paris and then like with maps and kind of like <laughs> trying to find this place. Sam was the same, these English blokes, you know, and then getting into this village and it was like six in the morning and the sun was just ri rising and we kind of found it. And then, um, we, we found, and, and the, the music happens on this little island in the middle of the river, and we saw this stage, and it was like, whoa, look at this. And then that's where it all started. Then we saw these people coming yeah. out of caravans, killing it on guitars. That's awesome. And like, like anyone who goes to that festival, I think that festival's turned on many people to this music. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, I was like, like Jesus, very distinct. I, I want to do this. The sound of like 45 this. people like, sitting in a circle waiting to solo two choruses on minor swing. <laughs> yeah yeah but in those days in those days yeah right well it's it's kind of waxed and waned a bit for me in those yeah. days it, it was more like it was the just those guys you know the rosenberg yeah. family and some others and and, and like a, a a few german guys and a few foreigners that's so incredible but there wasn't that's like you know it was yeah. like these like families that carried the tradition for like what seven yeah. years right just like, like yeah few tribes like the rosenberg R and like you know, right uh, you know, the trouble. Yeah, that's incredible. exactly. Man. So, so I saw this, and I, I, I was in London at the time, just kind of finding my way. You know, I kind of learned. 
I was into fusion, you know, like you, and yeah. I love Schofield and Stern, and I love Steve Vai and uh, all that stuff. And I actually kind of went through a whole metal thing, which I still love heavy metal. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, when I saw this music, I thought, okay, that's what I want to do, you know. So I kind of, I got a, a little trio together in London, and we just scraped together a couple of those tunes we could remember. Like, this is know, like in Duce the 90s? Ambiel. Exactly. Wow. Right. So, so we just kind of remembered that vibe and then um, just started banging out on nylon strings at the time. And, and we wanted to go busking, you know. Um, so we came to Amsterdam just by chance. And, uh, and we, we had made these, sorry, we had made these CDs, right? So we've, we produced these CDs and we tried to go busking in London, but we couldn't. So we went to Amsterdam and then the police were totally cool. And we had this scene which uh, was fantastic, this square called The Light Supply, and we just got there and started playing, sold all our products, um, met so many friends, had a great feeling, had cash in our pockets. That's it was awesome. just like, so we never left. So I've, I, here I am, I'm still here. You know. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. So how are, you, how are you taking this whole thing where people are coming after our, like half, half the words in our style? <laughs> did, you, did you get some of like, don't say gypsy? kind of oh, this, it's a new thing I've, it's a new thing um and, and i've def definitely seen that I've, I've had a few messages from people saying should, should i be mentioning the word you know, you're like are we gonna get shut down it's and like in your business it's a, and it's like my the name of my pet you know yeah, it's like yeah. gypsy jazz so, gypsy but jazz thankfully secrets. you know a lot of my friends are, are these guys you know like stocklow mm -hmm. and i, yeah, I was with yeah. palace at the they they're proud to the, of course it goes beyond gypsy the sinti tribe right. of the gypsies you know but they, they love that term and it, and it kind of describes their vibe and their, their way of living and, sure. and the music you know so yeah i keep i kept telling people that like the jews will take it if the gypsies don't want it anymore and we can just go with gypsy jazz so <laughs> feel free to jazz. change I love it. it to gypsy jazz if 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 the you know I, the, the extremists come after you <laughs> i love it i love it i love it yeah right 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 that's a good that's a good that's, point that's awesome. So how did how was it like in the nineties like learning this stuff? I mean, no YouTube. How would you how would you go right. about getting better other than like, you know, buy, well, buy a CD, right? Yeah. So you'd have, you know, some old VHS of some footage of one of these guys playing at some German festival. It was all fuzzy. We <laughs> would go to I would go to the camp, I would visit Stockholm and, and those guys and they're, they're beautiful people and so the welcoming and yeah, okay. right down in Noonan, near really? Eindhoven. It's like it's only a, is that like a, how do you visit? Like what what does that look like? Well, Just I was go? yeah. Well, I was Not lucky enough go? to yeah. Well, I was lucky enough to have a, a a guy called Hans Malen who was who was the guy that actually kind of brought the Rosenberg Trio to kind of the world stage, if you like. Got them mm -hmm. into Carnegie Hall and at some festivals and the thing with Grappelli. And this guy Hans Malen is a Dutch guy, and he also kind of liked the way that I was playing and kind of introduced me in Stockholm at the time. And we had kind of a little bit of mutual respect. And mm. so I was kind of invited to go down and visit. And it's always been that way with me. You know, I've got a great re relationship with those guys and they are, you know, nothing, they, they'll give, they, like we said at the beginning of the conversation, you know, they're very open and they love people who are doing it in a different way. They're not going, why aren't you? They're the last guys to say, dude, you've got to get your rest stroke technique together. Right, right. They're the last guys to say that. They just go, we love that you're doing something different, you know? And, yeah. and they're into the heart. They're into the heart, you know? I was seeing like, you know, a video of like, uh, I think it was Amadi Schmidt and he was t saying how like all his brothers play, but they all like, you know, play different. And it's like the way that they just figure out guitar is how they play. And there's not even like real right hand consensus between, you know, them and their dad. Yeah, you know? it's amazing that the, 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 the music is passed down in a, a visual way, but without intellectualizing it or even defining it in words going, you know, the way that we talk about a rest stroke and then every string that this is foreign to them. It's just somehow yeah. they, they pick it up just by watching. And that would not work with the Jews. We would have to <laughs> diagrams of everything. And... <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> what the people group. of the book. <laughs> Great. Great. Yeah. You know, that's what I say to all the students. It's like, there's whatever it takes and everyone's different. We all learn in different ways. Some people sure. pick it up from like tons and tons of charts and PDFs and they want to be, and other people more like myself and, you know, just want to see it and hear it. And 
so you know i'm not kind of coming down on any way of learning and it's of just course, kind of whatever of it takes to at the end of the day be there and and enjoy this music you know what man I mean? rob what's it take to get you to talk shit about something <laughs> i i i, I possible well, huh <laughs> i i'm pretty you know i i, I, I just kind of I'm, just I'm, I'm, pr I'm pretty i'm pretty kind of uh positive these days i, I try That's to be great. positive and and um I mean, you know, come to Amsterdam, we'll hang out. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like you guys, you guys came up with legalized weed, so you're also chill. That's crazy. <laughs> right, it's, it's big like business. It's, it's big business here. I, I, don't, I don't even drink. I don't, I don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's great. Man, so you spent some time with Jimmy Rosenberg, right? He, and he, right. This guy is my right. absolute hero. Like, for me, yes. I don't know. It's like just something. There's like... It, it, it's beyond gypsy jazz for me. To me, there are a few players in every style that just have this thing in their rhythm. It's Michael Brecker in fusion and Oscar Michael Peterson Brecker. in jazz, you know, and Michelle Petrucciani in jazz. And, you know, Jimmy to me in, in gypsy, really the only guy in gypsy jazz that has that kind of thing. And I can't explain it, but it's something about the relationship of how their notes sit in the groove that creates this momentum that just sounds like, like a plow, just destroying things, just like, right? Yeah. And so it's like, how, how it's, is like, how is it sitting in a room listening to him? Like, I saw a video of like a foot across. Right, right. So, so I knew Jimmy since he was like 12 years old or 10 years old. I met him at Samoa. Uh, I got to know him. And again, Hans Malen, this guy was helping his career and, Again, Jimmy would come to Amsterdam and, and hang out. And he was really, he, when he was like 12 or 13, he was like the shiny button, the, the, the most bright eyed, beautiful kid in the world who was playing like nobody ever played before. And, and, I, and I also mean Stockler and people like that. I mean, this kid, like you say, there's something in those fingers and those hands that when you sit in a room and hear him play guitar, it, it completely. It, it goes right, right in you. Um, and it doesn't matter if if it's fast notes or or if it's just one note. The vibrato is fierce. Yeah. It's like it's, it's like when I'm teaching people the vibrato. It's not it's it's not like kind of like it's it's it's, it's like you can't you know it's like yeah. really squeezing that note. Right. Like like and it's so it's like it's just like Hendrix. You know like right. when Hendrix Hendrix plays guitar, it's not like it's, it's life or death. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think when Jimmy plays, it's like that. And his, when you see his fingers move across, it's just unbelievable. So he, he was amazing. And, and he, you know, uh, he, he stayed Most with me for, for oh, really? yeah, the story. He stayed with me for like a year in Amsterdam and we really hung out and played and partied pretty heavy, um, really, really hung out. Um, He's an amazing, uh, he, he's an amazing guy as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's had, you know, we, we've all seen the, those documentaries and films and we kind of know sure. the, the cliched story of, you know, uh, what the happened to him. The life, right? Right, exactly. But um, that's one thing. But the, the playing, which luckily is documented for us on video and, and those albums that he recorded, was second to none. You know, nobody else could play like that. Uh, and yeah. all those guys, all those Rosenberg guys and the Shapers, they, they would all say the same thing. Um, there was something extra incredible about the way he played this music. And, and uh, yeah. To me, it's like, it was just, you know, like, like even beyond the rhythm thing, it's like, in the style, the style is very, it's limited in a way. A lot of people play the same kinds of things. But yeah. he just seemed to really improvise. Like, it was like something... Not to say that they're not improvising, but again, it's like, it's like hearing Django play, you know, it's like, the thing is just the, the quality of the ideas was great and consistent, yeah. you know, like a Charlie Parker and somebody like that. It's like all these people hit the right kind of stuff, but it's like with him, there was, yeah, just that extra, like 5% the, was just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, in, in every area of, of his musicianship, it's like, you know, I've been with him when he's like heard something that Borelli's played and He's, he can pick it up immediately, you know what I mean? Just quickly work out one of those weird, inv weird inversions. Mm -hmm. He's really quick. Uh, the reason he got so good at Young, because his, his father locked him, you know, in the room for like 12 hours at a time to really, you know, and, and couldn't come out until he had that solo down. Then he had to have that solo. Then he had to learn that Rosenberg trio thing and play it faster. There was a real competition at the time. And he, he was like a, a groomed 
trained uh, killer at the time. Mm. And his yeah. relation there, he's Stoklo's um, nephew? Or like yeah, second, right. That, second, cousin, second cousin. Yeah, right. Something like that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. How, what was, what was but, partying like in those days? Yeah, great. Just no holds barred, you know, just, just, just jumping in taxis and going to bars and drinking and doing other things and playing okay. and, and, uh, I mean, that guy as well is, 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 is incredibly, you know, if you're with him, it's like, it's very spur of the moment. And, and if let's go there, let's, 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 yeah. let's go to Paris. So let's, let's do this. So I love <laughs> that. I love that kind of that, that, that vibe. Yeah, um, dude. He's, a, he's a beautiful, beautiful guy. And you can hear it in his music. Yeah. Are you still in touch in some capacity? Or yeah, a little bit. You know, he's not doing so great. He, he's, he's, he's alive. Yeah, and he survived least, that. He survived that. I, I, what he I did. Google every now and again and see a lot of right. videos. Right, so he's still playing. And yes, yeah, right. He's had a little mini kind of comeback kind of thing. You know, he's he's been trying, and he's he's kind of he's he's not in top shape, you know, mentally yeah. and physically. So it's t it's tough, you know. Yeah, of course. And I'm I'm thankful, and you know, never got yeah. into that. The real well, you heavy stuff. You hopped off the know. train, uh, you know, right. just in time. Started the family right, kind doing of. the right things at the right time. It's like I've so. gone, yeah, kind of thing, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, Jimmy's a great inspiration too. Yeah, so that's that's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about, like, I guess the, your your path in the business of Gypsy Jazz, which is like you know the website thing and the giving. And I see right. you like making this transition, which I think is like exactly in the right time. From like you know, a lot of people were really pushing like these academy kind of things and but now you're streaming live getting to people that way it's like mm -hmm. when did you start gypsy the, the gypsy jazz secrets yeah well it all started in about 2001 with uh, i did these books and they were kind of like you could relate them to kind of like abasold style uh books but they, they were very simple there was only tab <clears throat> only tab and the chord shapes and then a cd with the back end tracks so i did these six volumes of those mm -hmm. um with the repertoire um and that was just at the same time that the internet was kind of coming popular 2001 2000 so and you're like riding the wave from the beginning yeah and it was just kind of by accident i kind of like wrote out a few shapes and you know i'm not educated in, in music particularly um so i just kind of people were asking can't you write those yeah okay so we i made this book put it on our website at the time and it just went like crazy, you know, like suddenly, I mean, we, we were busking every day uh, mm -hmm. in those years on the square here. Um, and all these orders coming from all around the world. Just from people. Out of curiosity, what's the average amount of money you would pull in on the square busking Gypsy Jazz? Oh, yeah. Well, I can't, you know, I can't, I can't, <laughs> talk, about, I can't talk about money on, on the... <laughs> Well, put it this way, it was enough to have a fantastic night out. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Oh, it was enough to support a habit. <laughs> that nice. <laughs> okay. Hey, to be honest, to be honest, I encourage young players uh, rather than get into like boozy bars and, and, and stuff like get out. And if there's a square near you, Dude, get out there. And, I, yeah, I don't know if you like, know this about me, but me and Danny and Marvin, what we, we were touring like consistently 300 days a year. And we would spend five, six, seven hours a day busking before our shows, playing gypsy jazz, I, like me and him, every town in the states. You know? So, so this is fantastic, and and this is yeah. this is against the the normal stream of, of what you, what you're meant to be doing. And I think this is why you get so good at what you do, um, or the best that you can be. If you've played hours, you know what I mean. Before a gig, you, it's, sure. it's and it's like the gypsies as well. They're 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 playing right now. Right. They're, 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 that's why they're, it's not like that's some secret. Hang, that's how you hang out. What are you going to do? Watch TV? You, you play and, and you get good. <laughs> yeah. I think busking is good because you kind of, you're playing at your best. You never know who's walking by. Yeah. You basically, I mean, we played on Light Supply and, and I, I don't know if you know this story, but I, I, I got to know George Harrison from the Beatles no. in the last few years of his life. No. Um, I, I went over to his house many times. We played and, and all that stuff. But, uh, I really? met him through the street. Uh, his gardener was on the square and bought a CD. And uh, luckily, <laughs> I had my phone number on it. And then George <laughs> called me. And uh, so I went over to play for George. And that, that whole story, which is still carrying on, my new album's going to be all George Harrison songs, kind of gypsified kind of thing. Um, and I met loads, loads of people, Willie Nelson, all these people on the street, you know. That's so I always encourage it. You know, it's like, 
uh, well, we, we met we met Dave Matthews, but he didn't give us a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's that's a good yeah. story. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. But I mean, yeah, I think playing on the street like makes you tough mentally too, because you're like, first of all, there's no expectation that somebody walking is gonna stop, and then when they do, they you know you stop them and. Uh, it- Exactly, and I, I think that's a, that's a different kind of training of playing than than playing passively, uh, either at home in your room or or in a bar where no one gives a fuck, which mm-hmm. you can be in those kind of situations. Mm-hmm. If you're on the street, you really got that. Yeah, like you say, someone's walking by; they've never heard you play before. But you're the reason you're there is you want to stop them, and they're gonna get, you're gonna turn them on, and then they're gonna actually get some music from you, you know? yeah so so you kind of play in a different way and you get that experience to kind of you know what song is the next good song to play which can sure you yeah. know warm yeah. up the crowd and then you get to those kind of things that you know cr- also climax. so comfortable with the way you actually sound without like not even an amp but like walls without any reflection so it's like a kind of dryness you know it's that's hardcore. like it's, it's, it's hardcore it's really hardcore yeah and it, it's hardcore the, in the States, the only problem with busking is that uh, the homeless here, when they see exposed money on the street, it's like vultures. They start, like, circling you, like, oh! <laughs> we have so seen it all, seen money. it all. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. We, we, we had other characters around which look after that, you know. We had Did all sorts of... The... Anybody, like, snatch and run? Well, uh, I, we we probably did once. We probably did, but our our our, our t- t- tactic was to fill the hat with money before we started. You know? Oh, so like, pure success. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, and, and even if we didn't sell anything, it's still kind of like, like when we split it up at the end, it still was. <laughs> yeah, I get to get my twenty back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, no good. busking. It was great, and and at the end of the day, musically, you're actually you're developing your own thing and you're playing like I was playing Bossa Dorado or, or those those songs like you know ten instead of once in a day I play like right. you know 20, 20 times in a day perform yeah. it 20 times in a day and also you get the incentive of getting so bored of it. it's like let's learn one that's just like it you know that's like that's exactly. the same thing so, you learn Besame Mucho and you're happy right? right yeah yeah so it was it was a great yeah you were telling about your about your company I'm sorry I, I, I veered back yeah, yeah. into so, Boston yeah yeah so so that's how it kind of started with cds and the music and then the books came about and they did really well they really went out all around the world uh especially north america Mm -hmm. and um and then around 2010 the kind of logical progression to that was to kind of with the internet becoming so you know so easy and and uh was to, to turn it into digital a digital way of learning, you know, so mm-hmm. videos, you know, so, so instead of a book, it'd be a video. So um, we, we made a course at the time. Um, it was called Gypsy Jazz Fast Track. And, uh, you know, I just sat there with a the camera and, and I kind of tried to re- recreate what I'd done in the books and then took it further with, with some soloing. And it, it was quite a job to be natural on camera at first, you know, it was terrifying. And I was worried about what everyone thought. And, uh, but it's progressed to yeah having having a lot of different uh digital courses with different areas these days it's just kind of the main thing is the gypsy jazz transfusion club that's kind of like my membership site so i Mm -hmm. really look look after people in that club and i do live internal lives with them and i kind of coach people personally and they get access to all my best library of kind of lessons that focus on the rhythm and the soloing and the repertoire and there's like guest teachers hear, hear like. that people repeat the yeah gypsy them? jazz transfusion club if p- if people want a, a quick hit then there's gypsy jazz crash course.com which is just mm-hmm. kind of like oh what's this gypsy you know that's like a real basic little course for free which kind of teaches a couple of those chords and a little bit of a couple of licks and a couple of uh things gypsy jazz crash course.com um, but yeah, so this, all this, I, I work with a, a guy from New York, Jason. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're a two man team and I could say, you know, he's like the brains and I'm the, I'm the guy on camera, but I've learned a lot too. And to be honest, it's, it's kind of not, not in a, a planned way. It's become like a, I absolutely love what I do, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, I, and it kind of, it's weird, you know, I've got kids here and um, I do tour, you know, once a month I'm, go in some country, you know, to guest as a, as, as at a festival, or maybe I'll do a week in England or I was just in Australia. When you um, go, do you go by yourself or do you go with a band? 
Um, yeah, I heard you ask that question to Ollie. And yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it, I think times have changed. And uh, it used to be only the band. It would be like, kind of like you guys. It would be like mm -hmm. impossible. There's like a, a, you know, sworn on, on an oath of blood. It's like, it, yeah. it, it would be absolutely unthinkable that someone would, would go solo, you know. Yeah. But these days, it's just changed. And part of that is the fact that, you know, a lot of guys do play decent rhythm. And that's what we're talking about. You're playing with a rhythm player and a bass player. And they kind of know because they've seen my stuff and they, they kind of write even the lessons. They kind of know how I might want the rhythm, you know. So it's mm -hmm. like there's no there's usually not too too many uh, unpleasant surprises when you, when you hit hit the bandstand, you know. So usually it's solo these days, you know. And mm -hmm. I like doing collaborations as well. So I, I was, um, you know, like I was with Paulus for the other night. Uh, I'll be in LA doing my, I do these retreats as well, you know, where like, uh, like 10 to 20 people get together and we, we've done them in Iceland and Australia and New York and next one's in LA and it's a, they call it a Gypsy Jazz Breakthrough Retreat. Mm. And we're doing that with Howard Alden, this jazz guitarist. Yeah, and that's the guy who played the guitar in Sweden Lowdown. Right, right, exactly. It's the guy, it's the guy that taught <laughs> yeah. Sean Penn how to play gypsy jazz. Yeah, that's right. So I love, I love these days. It's just, you know, it's like with you. It'd be, you know, it'd be great to collaborate. I, I love the yeah. energy of of meeting other players, and um, that's what I'm into these days. Well, one day we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. that's that's incredible. So, what are some I guess, what were some of the things that were like a light bulb moment for you with playing? Like, you know how sometimes you come into like a, like somebody gives you like this bit of information and like a little bit, op like this thing opens up. And it's like, it seems like people make like these big leaps at certain points in their playing. Usually like a few times, there's like, you're all of a sudden, like when, when was it in your kind of evolution as a player where you were like kind of, making a big step can you remember any moments like that uh, yeah it's, it's a great question isn't it um yeah. i'm trying to i'm thinking as you're talking and um um From i think like a young player to like all right yeah can, like improvise yeah it's it's kind of I've, i'm a little bit odd in that sense that i've never really um like i've never learned somebody else's solo or things like that i've kind of always been a little bit idiosyncratic a little bit um uh you know with the technique and also the playing a bit as well you know so kind of just kind of develop my own uh style or ideas and um i've sure. shied away from i mean i love i love the great i love i mean if yeah. i could i would you know, if I could, I would. <laughs> you know it's like i'll be i mean you know I, yeah i love listening to borelli and i i uh but uh so i, th I think it's just Getting getting the sound is really important, you know. Right. And 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 I've I've learned that it, I, I'm trying to teach. I teach people don't be a drunk Aldemiola, you know. I love that. How many how many times <laughs> have you been have you been the? You, you, and you, you hear those guys. And if you're Aldemiola, great. If you're Jimmy Rosenberg, great, you know. But but if it, I'd sooner yeah, hear someone you, who's just you yeah yeah. The, if you the, don't know harmony and you don't know like you know. And you're just it's trying just, to play fast, ambiguously fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm trying to tell people to play within their means a little bit and, and, and try and make a little bit meaningful music because it will go further when, when the listener listens. You know, I think, I think we don't want to hear that guy who's struggling when they're playing. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, getting back to your question, I, it's hard to say, but it's like you learn from even you learn from listening to yourself and, and watching yourself a little you know the bad things the things you kind of think oh geez i don't want to do that and do less mm -hmm. of that and when you know when you're doing a gig and you think you're playing nothing you think everyone's standing there going i want my money back <laughs> right and then you watch it back and it's actually beautiful or something you know so yeah you know what i mean that's, it's like yeah it's, that's good it, well, Mm. And you were telling me briefly that like you started off having troubles with being extremely like shy as a person, and like for a yes. shy person, you're everywhere online. So that that I'm might very... that might have been like therapy. <laughs> yeah, I'm very I'm very shy. Um, Still, and well, yeah, but I'm just you're but so I public. you know I, I'm I'm yeah I know it's 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 so weird. I, I, you know, it's my mother is amazed at what how i've changed and stuff there's been a lot of reasons for that as well and you know i i, I got clean and sober like um mm -hmm. eight years ago which is a which was for me a big deal 
Mm -hmm. And that really, I, I would not be doing any of, the, of this if I was still my old self. And how, um, how hard were you going? Oh, it just, it just was, it was just unsavory. You know, it was just okay. unpleasant. Yeah. So I had a choice, you know, and, um, and I only say that because I'm, I'm not, it's not a sob story, but occasionally, you know, there's a guy you, you meet, I meet guys and just like I met a guy in LA who was a, who was a successful actor and he was sober and I couldn't believe it. He, he still had fun. You know, he was my inspiration. Right. And then, but there's been guys, Hey Robin, you know, how's it going, man? I said, yeah, it's good. And I, Hey, um, is it true? Did you, and, and I said, yeah, man, it's like, this is, this is what I did and talk about it, man. It's like, and I've yeah. actually helped a few, helped a few people as well. And you know, musicians, they, they can get led down that path uh, in this world. So there's I'm so quite, much, quite so open about that. There's so much and I'm, of it going around if you're hitting the road hard and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I, I love people who drink and, and party. It's just that yeah. if you recognize that what you're one of those people that, that can't, then, then it's yeah. great if you can get help, you know. Yeah, and I just yeah. recognize that. That's all. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's just not yeah. that was good for you. Look, you, you know, you're really <laughs> doing something with your life. It's wonderful. <laughs> Man, so, okay, let's talk about, let's talk about some like, I don't know, harmony. Yeah. Like, how do you think about this stuff? You know, there's so yeah. many approaches lately. So yeah. to, me, to me, it seems like the real divide is by people who see things in terms of modes and people who see things in terms of navigating through either substitution thinking or just seeing our pe the arpeggios of the song, more like a triadic approach. Like, what's your vision of the fretboard? When you look down, yeah. what do you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, um... God, again, it's not like I'm seeing like, you know. Uh, let's talk about minor swing, just for shits and giggles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like so. What, like, what, what lights up? You know. Well, I just, you know, I, I just know this. Uh, you know, every time I hit D minor recently, you know, and it, it goes in and out of vogue. You know, I, I keep going. You know, I love mm -hmm. that sound. You know, and then like melodic minor. Yeah, like this, yeah. this, this. Uh... So like, yeah. So a lick, a lick I've just, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a lick I've been getting into my, myself is just if I can pull it off, it's kind of like when I hit a D minor. So it might be going. Yeah. So it might be going. <laughs> Da, 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 yeah, you know, like that. I so like that. That's like one so, little sound. The A minor. The... Yeah, that's nice. yeah, so yeah, like yeah. Playing melodic minor on the fourth. That's very unusual. Right, right. But you, um, you don't think about it as melodic minor. You see it as some that, sh yeah, that, that, shape, that shape, that shape. Yeah, that sound. Yeah, that sound. So like the same, you know, the same for you know, like mm -hmm. that, that, that kind of like. Yeah. So I might, I might, I might do, you know, in a, in a solo, I could go like minor swing, two, three, four. You know, that, that kind of, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I like so looking for, me, for those I kind would, of. I would see that as A melodic minor going to D melodic minor. Right, 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 yeah. right. But, but like, right. you know, so to me, that's the interesting thing. It's not so much like what we play, because we all, we all play very similar things, but it's like how you build a cabinet folder in your mind and where you're storing those files. Like what's yeah, that, yeah, yeah. What's it called? I know, yeah. I know. It's weird. And, and, and you're, basically, you're basically updating our, the things that we like and, and know that work well. And we're kind of getting rid of, just like your inbox or whatever, you're kind of getting rid of the shit, which is not actually helping you. Sure. So you, you're trying to refine your stuff. And um, I, that's, that's kind of how I play. I, I kind of play. I'm not thinking about, not really about theory, you know, so I'm not thinking... Like if I play, I'm not thinking about the notes or or, or the or the scale or anything. It's just the, the the sound more like that, and you know, okay. like I love I love this like like resolving yeah. back to the A minor. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's this sound. So it's yeah. take from this. Like I might even go like if it's going. I'm gonna go. Yeah. So how would you, so, how would you articulate what what you're because what are over that E7? What what are you thinking? I get 
Are, what are you thinking? Yeah, yeah, not, not, <laughs> not, not, not a, not a scale or anything. Just, just like, you know, like, like, shape, like a shape, a sound, like. I, I, I guess basically you learn to, you know, what, what's like, what, like bass, you know, like that E seven seven. Right, that's the kind of like that's just like E seven, but then you got the the altered sounds, you know, like uh. Sure. Yeah. Like just kind of, so it's it's. That, yeah. Like that is like, uh. C sharp yeah. major, you know. So yeah, like I, I guess even with that, like to me, the way the way I automatically think, and it's you know, I think it's the school of thought I come from in music. So if you were to play this, like an F minor kind of sound over it, I would automatically think E altered, like F right. melodic minor. And the moment you play this sound, I'm thinking E half hole diminished. Right. Okay. That's fantastic. So, so it's like that's I just know like that like that's what Schofield would play and what this about, is like what, what I'm... Scott Henderson would play. So I guess my filing cabinet is very different than yours, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. That's right. Schofield would absolutely one of my favorite players ever. Yeah. Um um but yeah, I, it's kind of like there's basic things for like spelling out the harmony like 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 we know it like <laughs> And then, and then there's a, a level where it's a little bit, ooh, like, you know, the, the, the... And then there's a level, more modern level, which, like you're saying, which is totally like, whoa, how, you know, how could you play F minor over E7, you know? So there's the, it, it depends. And when you're solo, when you're in that moment, playing minor swing, you know, with Paulus Schaefer, um, then you get to the E7, right? And then you think, am I going to do that Schofield kind of thing? Or is that, <laughs> is that kind of too modern for around here? Are people going to look at me funny? Um, there's all those, it's these decision, last minute decisions that you're doing, but. Um, that's, yeah, that, it, that's, that's, that's the weird thing about playing jazz nowadays. I think also in most situations that you step into, it seems to me like, you know, people really don't want to discuss what kind of chords they're playing other than the basic grip. So if you're going for some very exotic sound, like, you know, if you are going for this kind of thing over the E7, but your rhythm section is going for that kind of thing, that C and C sharp are not going to get along too well. That's right. So it's like, you know, there, there needs to be a, a lot of the sound to me of like modern jazz coming out of New York these days is just people not talking about the chords and then right, like, you right. know, having the, that level of dissonance the, between the, the comping and the soloing. Yeah, 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 right, exactly. And, and obviously the difference with this music, Gypsy Jazz, the rhythm guy, my brother is completely oblivious to, he's just going like, oh. <laughs> he's just going like that. He's not having that conversation. Like, he's not thinking, what, what, was, what, was, what was Danny saying? He was saying like, yeah, yeah. He's just going, <laughs> like looking at me because I'm, I'm making some weird sound. So, 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 so it, therefore it doesn't get, it's just superimposed over that bed of, you know, it could be sure. 19... Well, if 19, the information what? you're shooting out as a rhythm player is basic enough, then you're just going to be fine making the decision yourself, especially if you're, like, yeah. staying real triadic or something. But yeah, yeah. I mean, so, like... No, go ahead. Yeah, so therefore, the so therefore is the soloist in, in, this, on, in this ensemble, you know, with, with this gypsy jazz rhythm section, uh, you can play in the pocket. Uh, I would describe it as in the pocket, you know, the bait, you know, going through the, the minor. If we're talking about minor swing, you've got that minor six arpeggio style mm -hmm. for the E7. You've got the E dominant sound. And when you do go outside, it, I love going outside, it, you know, and even the kind of Pat Metheny way, you know, where you just mm -hmm. kind of, you, 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 you're kind of cheating a bit. You're just kind of using the guitar as a, as a just kind of creeping up and down. Symmetrically the whole thing. Right, you couldn't hand on heart say that you meant to do each no, it just happens to be really convenient. Uh -huh. Like Michael Brecker Michael Brecker actually had to work it out, you know, like yeah, each yeah. trans transposition. But from he, listening to his licks, I think he really listened to a lot of guitar players. You know, it's like the, right, those kind right, of descending right. pentatonic like a half step up on the, on the saxophone, yeah. you would have to actually work it out. Right, right. right. With a guitar the, just like we're exactly. gonna do it on four now. <laughs> and, and what, but the thing is that the, the great thing about juxtaposing playing out with the gypsy jazz sound is that 
it really it's it it, it really has a powerful effect because you know even if you just say you're playing an A minor and you, you're kind of playing along if you want to kind of like make it sound then just you could just put C minor you know what I mean that sound so you go over and then so I do that kind of thing where I, I kind of know that C minor sounds pretty funky over A minor so sure. therefore F minor sounds you know like it sounds pretty good over D minor. So little things like that, um, I think. Yeah. And then most people go, whoa, mo whoa, mo modern, you know, modern, like, whoa, what's he? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's only little, a few little tricks. And just going up and down a fret sure. goes a long way, you know. So yeah, I teach that, that a little that, bit. Well, that's the thing about playing out. You know, I, I remember talking to Scott Henderson about this. And, um, mm. and he was saying, you know, when you're dealing with stuff that's, like, very chromatic, you know, you're painting with, with shades of gray. And they are distinguishable. But like when you think about like, you know, the difference between like, let's say the vibe of like, you know, an Ionian mode and a Phrygian mode where one is like your kind of normal sound and one takes you to the desert, right? It's very, right. like very abrupt kind of difference between. <laughs> and... It's like, you know. Right. Everybody's right. mind paints the picture immediately. So the right. difference between like two tone rows, right? Like a, and like a, it's like, they're not that different from each other, even though when you're hyper-focused, you know, it's just like, you know, two shades of gray that are slightly different and you can tell the difference. The problem to me with people right. that play two out <laughs> is that solo number two on the record tends to sound a whole lot like solo number one. So right, you can exactly. create this like right. level of push and intensity that's really incredible. But if you overuse it, it's at the it's at the price of like you know the direction of the story because you're you know you're you're kind of uh, you go you're going towards a palette that's pretty indistinguishable, right? As Absolutely. Opposed, yeah. And then, and then and, I th and especially in this music, then you risk you know your audience is is a lot of the audience is made up of people who like a tune, who like you know, who, who relate to the nostalgia of this music and, and, and the, mm -hmm. the melodies and the melodic way of playing. So obviously that kind of, if you're gonna only do that, it's gonna, you're gonna lose touch with your audience. Then, you, then you've got to move over to New York and join the queue. <laughs> join, you got to join the queue with those guys. Right, you know? exactly, like playing right? I mean, people at Smalls. And... <laughs> right, right, right. So, so just get down, you know, for the 1am 1, 1 set or whatever. So it's like, That's so... Nice. Yeah, I know well, a couple in, of players in comedy, who... in comedy, they call this uh, breaking the fuck meter. You know this? It's like right, when you say exactly. fuck too much in your set, and then you ruin cursing for everybody else after you. <laughs> exactly, it's exactly. Like you, can, you can break the audience with too much chromatic. It's like, ah, I just want to go home now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I need I a shower. Think, yeah, that's right. I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely, I, you know, I, I try to play melodically and, no, and no, we, quite we bluesy. You, and... you, you, are not, you are not in that... Uh, that yeah yeah but it's an interesting <laughs> it's interesting to to comment on that yeah really yeah funny. yeah dude that's funny. and uh, yeah so how about like some some rhythm stuff like you know i asked ollie this yesterday um and i want to ask you like what do you like to hear behind you how what makes you feel like the most supportive yeah I, I love i love um Basic in, in simplicity, I, lo I love someone who's right from the start. If I'm sitting on stage with someone, I, even before playing, I like someone who's actually sitting there, look looking at you. You know, what I mean, so so yeah. I'm playing with you, look, looking at you for for li <laughs> little gestures. You might go like so, you, attention. I don't like being someone a, who's just kind of. I, I don't want someone who's just kind of like, uh, you know, like I don't really like that rhythm of like. You know, like I, I'm obviously not going to be able to perform with that kind of that kind of uh, confidence. So, physically, like someone is actually kind of happy to be there and and and, and play. So that's one thing. And I'm not fussed if that person who who's able to do that isn't gifted with tons and tons of of inversions and voicings. If they can, if they can just hold a a steady beat, I, I'm right. pretty happy. Yeah. Um. If, if the if the guy or the girl can hold a steady beat, uh, with the rhythm. That that is a baseline, or all, all I'm really after, and I, the reason why that's you would think that was a given. You know, I mean, you, you know, like any rock drummer should be able to just play in time, right? I mean, uh -huh. but but in this music, 
the people who get involved with it and, and end up on stage for whatever reason, um, they're not always like, they might have only been playing a year or, or you know, like they're, sure. they're not, they might even not be a musician, but this music, you can kind of jump in at a, a very naive level and suddenly be playing with, you know, Angelo De Parra or something. And, and the thing is that the, the guys, it's an, it's an un, um, appreciate what's well, appreciate but it's uh mm -hmm. it's deceive deceivably hard just to do that that's what i'm talking about it's better just keep a steady beat um so many players professionals uh slow down that's the big um slow down you said mostly slow down you know so and and it doesn't even i don't even mean if it was on a fast one even if it was like a <laughs> And then, so, th so that is the worst. Dragging is the worst. That, the the worst dragging is the feeling. worst thing. So then, then I overcompensate. I stamp my foot. Mm -hmm. I'm looking daggers at the, the, the person. So, and, and usually the case, it can often be that the, the reason they're slowing down is because they're, they're trying to show off or they're trying to impress, perhaps impress me with uh, kind of cool chords and, <laughs> and all this stuff. And, and instead of putting all their effort and energy on just going... It's not easy to play in time, yeah. It's, it's not easy to play in time. And also, and I'm not the, the world's best rhythm player because, because I get distracted. I'm like, AD, I'm like, yeah, I, hear, I, I go with the flow. <laughs> so you, so you've, got to have a you've got to have a mentality of the rock drummer, the ACDC's drummer, the guy who, who's happy, not right. even putting a fill in, not even go, do, 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 do. they're just going, Nothing. not moving. And well, that's, that, that, that's a mindset. Is the greatest sin is sin, a sin against time, you know? Cause it's like, I, I like to describe it like people, like to people like this, that like the idea, like if you think about time itself, like the big time, not our, not our song time, like the time that we're all writing, we're all living on a wave <laughs> that's moving, right? And yeah. if a musician, when a musician counts something off, what they do is say, like, look, inside this big picture, this big gigantic river, here's a little stream. It goes like this. Right. And if you right. and if you draw other people's attention to it, they're like, oh, and let, let's paint on this. Right. Like right. I'd say it's right. a swing thing. Now, right. that thing, that specific thing, that stream was always there since the beginning of time. I'm just pointing at it. Right. And now, if right. I lose my attention for it after bringing all of you guys to observe it and I just drift off into like, oh, let's make Robin like check out this chord and they're all like what happened to this <laughs> right 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 we're still writing it and it's like a betrayal, right. you know you can't let go of a tempo till a song is over right right exactly so so and that's easier said than done uh you know so so it's it's the the way to do that is to obviously practice with a metronome focus on on the don't lose distraction focus on the music and that's why i mean like look at the, the guy who's playing really lose just get into it even if it's just a, a minor blues it's three chords you know you should never get bored and and just keep it light and keep the time and, and try and feel it and some people have great time naturally i think mm -hmm. um and some people you know they really have to work at it i really um, I, I tend to i tend to notice that a lot of the people that complain that they don't have great time naturally are also the people that don't practice with metronomes yeah, could, there's it, a strange it, correlation there. I'm just saying. That's real. I, yeah, I don't know what. I, I, yeah, maybe in the, maybe the next guest will put two and two together. But um, yeah, yeah, the metronome is unbelievable. I, I haven't even been like I never like the truth. The real truth is that yeah. when I was a kid, I was never practicing with a metronome, and all, all the practice was done on the street, just blah blah blah. And, and mm -hmm. but these days, when I'm when I'm sitting here alone, uh, you know, when the kids are at school and uh, I'm not on tour, I'm. I just put, I like the feeling of a pulse, you know, so I'll go on YouTube sure. and there's like a, there's like a, a nice sound and wooden metronome, just get it going. And I kind of like, I, I don't know. It, it's, the, it, it's awesome. It works. It's it works awesome. for like, me, it's like you know, so I'll just kind of, and, and it's like, then, then you've got that little river you're talking about and you kind of like, oh, I think I'll just float on this for a bit. And it's, sure. uh, it's a lovely way. It's a lovely way to practice between your rhythm and your, your solo and just kind of focus on that pulse. How, how would you go about practicing? Like, I guess, I, I don't know how to ask this, because I, again, in, I think in my style of music, because of like, you know, Holdsworth and McLaughlin and the kind of people that I grew up listening to, like, the, a discussion about subdivision in time is always a part of the discussion. In Gypsy Jazz, it seems like 
people are doing all sorts of cool stuff with subdividing in the time, but it seems like in, in every avenue and everywhere you turn in the style, people are not really talking about the names of the things they're doing. Right? It's like, what, right. like, how do you think about time and the lines you play and how they, um, what they are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely haven't quantized any of, of, of this. You know, I, I do love that's what, like when, when the rhythm is just solid, I, lo I love, you know, you know uh, playing with the time and, and just skating on it. That really, when the time is, is really good, I, I, mm -hmm. I do love, you know, not just doing a, a constant flow of notes. That's not really the way I play anyway. So I love mm -hmm. uh, just putting notes in and um, I, I'm not doing anything radical. You know, I, you know, really kind of pushing whatever you three over four or anything i um <laughs> occasionally i might do yeah do something kind of rhythmically kind of where the, yeah. the rhythm section just got to just kind of keep 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 on it but <laughs> i'm more kind of I, it, it's just such joy when, when you can click into the to the swing what what we you know that that swing thing you know i don't know mm -hmm. sinatra or something when, when you get that vibe of like <laughs> You know, it's playing T for two, that yeah. kind of tempo. You know, when you get into that kind of medium swing, then there's the fast swing. You know, there's, lo there's lots of different tempos, right? And with the gypsy stuff, obviously, and with the gypsy guys, you know, they love it. You know, it's right. like... They're like And then you got to go like that, right? So, right. so, oh Jesus! Like, then, it's then about you... under, but I think like that, that's the, that's the real lesson of like you know rhythm. It's like to and and I think also for timekeeping, if you understand the dance and what you know the, uh, what by dance I mean the feeling. It's like it's, I, I I studied this percussionist when I was a kid, or you know when I was like I don't know nineteen, and uh, he said like you know it's in the shoulders. You just gotta like you understand what it feels mm -hmm. like. And then you can keep feeling it, and then it's gonna feel horrible when it stops. You know, yeah. it's, it's just it takes it takes on a sort of kind of a certain inertia, right? If you're playing like uh, like a kind of groove, you start feeling it, and you just keep doing it, right? It's just <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely and, it's infectious, and, right? And, and it and, needs and, to be in the line too, right? If you're playing like a line, people need to like. That's the thing about, about playing, you know, any sort of style of jazz that I think is the, the biggest initial, exactly doing what you're doing, like for, for like a person making it from an amateur sound to, to, a, uh, to a professional kind of sound, it's being able to shoot out a line that paints the harmony and the groove, right? Even if it could be like the simplest thing, but it's like, you know, being able to go like... It's like you know exactly when to jump in you know what's yeah going yeah on, exactly right it's obvious. exactly and to make that like the faster you know you play whatever it's like exactly okay, exactly you, you understand what it's supposed to do exactly yeah. exactly and and yeah you've got to have the finesse to 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 make those things I, you know when i'm teaching improvisation and a lot of people are are getting ahead of themselves, you know, and, and, and struggling with, with crazy stuff. And I'm, I'm saying on minor swing, you can, you can just do this thing like called bouncing. And it, sorry. And it's kind of a bit like that. It's kind of like just going like, just pick two notes, you know, and, and kind of like, And, so uh, the idea and is it, just to take two two melodic components that work with the chords and figure out a game with the, with time to make them work. Right, exactly. So so you're relying on 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 groove and time. You're not you, you, your brain isn't thinking, oh Jesus, what's the what's this minor six? You, you've just got those two notes, and and when you go the D minor, well, you just got move one, right? You got D sure. minor, E E seven. So so can you get those notes grooving? And and then and also you know when I'm when I see guys do that, I say I said that sounded great, man. It sounded like the solo you did before when you were you were struggling and the, dr just, the drunk the miola <laughs> the drunk aldemiola totally hammered aldemiola like it's good to as a fallback at least like because we all do it you know you're in a jam or whatever and sure. you think you, we think that we're 
we meant to do this. We were meant to do the dance, you know. So, but it's hard to do. You could just go, you know, if it's going, you could go. And Django did those. Sure. You know, those kind of things. And okay. very rhythmical. And sometimes it helps students when they get those little things which work and, you know, they, always, they, they can make it sound good. The way I always explain, uh, you know, the topic of phrasing to my students is that it's broken up into three, three things you could do if you just take a look at what, what a soloist is doing. So I say you're either making statements, you're writing right. the groove, or you're shredding. And right. th those are rhythmic decisions. So writing the groove to me would be like playing the same kind of subdivision that's present in the rhythm section. So if it's a swing thing, eighth note to tune, so it's like, it's all triplet based, right? So right. Like, you're like, right, either swung eighth notes or triplets. But right. playing straight rhythms against it tends to create a focal point in the music, right? And that's what like Louis Armstrong and B.B. King do, right? right? So it's right. Like being able to go like, da, 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 da. So, you know, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it that's pops great. Out. Yeah, and, and yeah. Then you just kind of double it up and go to like that, that kind of world is shredding. But it's like the, it's, the thing is to understand when you listen to a Django solo, like to me, it's always like breaking it up to like percentages of what's happening. So to me, it's like 70% statements, right? Like 10% riding the groove, 20% right. shredding, or some right. solos are. 20% rising, but it's like most of the time he's just making some sort of like exactly some big melodic thing over the exactly and, it's and then it's like those musical pop. yeah yeah, yeah because those that, that that the big chromatic line it doesn't it, it comes out of a little bit of like oh come on in go on in like it, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a it's you like, know what I mean it's like oh, I'll throw that one in yeah and moving, uh, but it's moving into like some sort of thing right yeah yeah exactly yeah that's a good way of looking at it yeah that makes yeah. sense yeah, that's yeah. cool. But uh, yeah, of course, this music, you know, it's all about the rhythm. And, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's tough, you know, it, it's, you need to work at it and um, listen to the music, you know, and I, I yeah, people got to feel it and, and uh, put, put their sure. body into it sometimes. Uh, to, what, you know, when you're getting your vibrato, like what with your left hand, what's it, what's yeah. it look like? Because I, I, I kind of like, uh, yeah, let, let, let's see that. So that, that's like, yeah. It's kind of like, just like that. Yeah, so this, I think what most people get wrong about this kind of vibrato, and you get absolutely right, is just that space right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. That part of your hand is not touching the back of yeah, your yeah, neck yeah. like Stevie Ray right. Vaughan or B.B. King. It's that right. space that allows that, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you get the rub. Yeah, yeah, that, that's how you get it, right? It's and quite you get a... that rub sound of like, you hear the frets, like, shh, 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 shh. Right? That's, that's, that's the beautiful sound, right? When you, when, right? When you get that going. Right? Um, Play and a few of those. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like if you, you, can't, you shouldn't be shy. Um, I feel shy now, but, but <laughs> it's like, we, we, you, you can really kind of milk it, you know, like. <laughs> and when, you I know, love it's that. Kind of, Yeah. Like that kind of, it's kind of like when, when I'm kind of like explaining it, it's kind of like the, the note comes like that and then it goes well, that's, that's exactly of, like, like how Billy you know Holiday I mean? sings right it's like, it, it exactly, exactly. Grows. it's that kind of vibrato ah. um, so, so I always tell people to not to be shy you know to kind of like they're playing gypsy jazz, like you said at the beginning, gypsy right. jazz, right? right. Django was a gypsy, right? And, right. and that meant they yeah. had real flair, flamboyant, um, and that was in his music as well. And, and if you, like, it means you play the guitar, like, you don't just go kind of like. Right. You, you go and go like. You know, it's like, it's, it's like, you Back travel of Schmidt, you know, play like that. It's like real in feel. In the States, we know. call that balls. Balls, exactly. Yeah, you gotta play with balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that, that that goes a long way, and it makes these guitars sing anyway. It makes them sound better. Sure, sure. Other vibratos are like the like the wide one, kind of like mm -hmm. on a, on a ballad you might play, which right. can really like if you drop drop the end on Claire de Lune, or, 
uh, it can sound really beautiful. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of like it's like the opposite of like Pat Martino or something. It's like you know you, you're playing the guitar like more like 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 Jimi Hendrix or a blues player. You know, I see a lot of correlation there somehow in the in the kind of you're really playing the guitar. You know, and uh, that really you're not going, but you're kind of going. You know. Sorry, I keep right. feeling it. Like, if you do it too much, you kind of like... I do it all the hands time. Off like that. Just get, get, get <laughs> Just those <'cause>... things. Yeah. <laughs> I know, That's but uh, yeah, so, so let your hair down, you know, when you, when you play this music, including the rhythm, get into it. I say, you know, get a little bit of the attitude as well. Don't be too polite. And I don't mean play over loud, but just kind I, of get the confidence to go and really kind of feel it. And I think that the, the main blocker for people with breaststroke technique, I know you don't, you don't subscribe, is the fact that you there's no touching the string and then plucking it. You go yeah. through it. It's one yeah, yeah, motion, yeah. And people are just afraid How to the go hell? through. Yeah. You know, to just, yeah. th that's, it's the fear of hitting. They don't want, right. like, it's not, it's not even the fear right. of missing, it's the fear of making a motion that's so confident, because if you don't have the confidence, you're cutting through strings, you're not really touching, yeah, yeah. Working, right? But yeah, I, I want to, I want to tell, like, you know, the people watching, I know you can't see the questions, and there were a bunch, and I didn't take any of them, because we're kind of, <laughs> but now, now is a good time for you people to ask Robin anything you want to know, but we're going we're gonna to keep talking. In the meantime, Robin, show Show us another another cool lick. Over. 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 Let's say over all of me. We talk about all, all of me, me yeah. all the time. Well, it's. Jeez, I keep. Yeah. I um, didn't even get there. Yeah, I don't know. I keep. I do it subconsciously. <laughs> like about every five minutes, I'm that way. It's like <laughs> it's, it's so weird. But really easy, really easy octave swing and lick over all of me is like if you go like. Sort of like. Um, Kind of this bass oh, and then go like so that's the basic which is very nice. kind of traddy but it if it's it... ah. If it's like a little bit, I'll go. Ah. That's very um, nice. It's kind of like a swinging lick. Yeah, like what's um, Montgomery kind of. Right, right. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, another, like, C. That, that's yeah. great. That's great. No, no, that's it's perfect. One. Uh, people can. Back, right, back right. It's quite si it. right. So, it's simple. It's simple to play. Mr. Joshua Bryan wants to know what guitar you're playing. Uh, this is a Swing Forty Two. Swing. It's actually 42. my latest. Yeah, it's actually it's a Pollock Gypsy guitar. Nice. And this is my latest sing signature model. It's made in Israel. Oh. And, uh, it's from. Uh, yeah. I'm from Israel. <laughs> yeah. So this too. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's, there's these guys. There's this guy called Eddie Pollack, uh, huh. originally, from, originally from Belarus. And uh, he lives in Israel. And he builds great guitars. And really? I've got a, a few of them. Wow, um, chances. That's, yeah, Have yeah, you ever been right. to Israel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I've been there many, many times. Wow. No and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you, you played I know. With, you played with Yaakov? Yaakov. Yeah, that's great. Hello, it's Yakov. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, it's a good. It's a good friend. He's a good friend. That's I love great. those guys. I love those guys. But it's a yeah. yeah it's a Pollock Gypsy guitar, and uh, this is the the Swing Forty Two. It's kind of like a long scale D hole. Um, beautiful. It's beautiful, actually. We're going to be launching yeah, it soon great. as well. So don't, don't throw it too far. <laughs> right, exactly. What, so you should you should say what picks and strings you're asked, because my people love to ask that again and again and again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. But, well, usually I'm not like a I'm not really bothered about the pick. Usually I've got those Dunlops uh, 1.5 uh, 
or cool. two, the, the nice. pink or the purple ones. But I was in the last, last time I was in the States, somebody gave me that. Ooh. And it's like a, it's like, it's like some bluegrass pick or something. Is it, was it wood? It looks wooden. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, it, it's, nice. it's quite, it's, 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 it's a brand, you, you know, everyone, there will yeah. be people who know those picks. Uh -huh. And for some reason it's quite, it's quite kind of, it's not as rigid as the others. So it's a little bit, it's got a little bit of softer sound, I think. So nice. I use that. Argentine strings, Savarez, usually play 11s. Um, well, Mr. Andre uh, Vergati said that you learned how to play Gypsy on your previous signature guitar, the, 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 oh, the Del Art. The oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, right. That, that, was, that was, in the old days, I, I, I had a signature guitar from Del, Del Arte. That's right. Del Arte. That's right. Oh. Del Arte. Yeah, Del Arte. Yeah. Cool. Well, cool. well he likes Yeah, it. I love it. And that's awesome. He likes that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, what, um, what kind of strings are you using right now? Yeah, these are Argentine, uh, red, the red Argentine ones. 11s or the 10s? 11s, yeah. Yeah. How, how, do, you you like, how do you like 10s? Did you ever, did you ever try to On some guitars, 10s, I, I used to have a Favino guitar, which 10s mm -hmm. killed, killed on it. Really? It was like, usually you think, again, it's counterintuitive. You think you, you, put a, you put the 10 on, it's kind of a little bit, kind of like a bit more kind of tinny, a bit, bit floppy kind of. But on, on this Favino, on certain guitars, the, that 10 can really, well, the guitar resonates at that whatever uh -huh. frequency, vibration. Just needs vibration. that tension. Right. right, exactly. So, um, yeah, 10s occasionally on some guitars. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Dude. Dude, I yeah, got, yeah, great. I, great to I, chat. I, I and I love, by the way, I, lo I love what you're doing too. And the reason I, <laughs> I know this guy, Danny, is because I've been sitting there like, like I've been sitting there in the coffee shop waiting for the kids and, and with everyone else on their phones, except I'm watching this guy, you know, <laughs> learn some Billy Holiday <laughs> songs or whatever. Don't, yeah, you, don't I, you love that? So I love what you're doing. It's really oh, fantastic. Oh, dude, I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for taking the time and being with us. And yeah, yeah. Great stuff, sharing the information. And I'm going to steal your lick. Boom, 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 Yeah, it's very... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll set you up with a, a membership for the Transfusion Club. And That'd you, be great. You can, and, and you, guys, occasionally you can come in and, and take what you want. And a lot of these people here are really trying to get better at the style learning, so this is a good idea for all of you guys. Yeah, if you, so. if you want just a quick hit, go to gypsyjazzcrashcourse.com. That's the kind of little... Little I'm thing. sure many of them would. Just crush course. Okay, great. But, um, I think yeah, this is wonderful. I think uh, I'm gonna and I'm gonna be back here Tuesday with the guy from Snarky Puppy with Mark Littieri. He's gonna hop on this thing, different style. Um, Beautiful. And thank and but and thank you, Robin Nolan, for giving yeah. us your time, licks, advice, and uh, blessings. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, and Henry Acres. Do you know this kid? I know Henry. I played with Henry. How you doing, bro? Yeah. Henry, yeah. This, this kid, Chris. Henry, do you want to be on this thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bring Henry gonna, on, man. What's we're going we're to we're listen to Henry shit. He's one of those young guys. <laughs> right. Yeah. Can you play a sound? Play, 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 a, little, play a little something for us, Rob. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Wonderful. It's late. It's late. It's late here. It's late. Dude, you're fucking <laughs> awesome. You're, you're crushing it. Thank you so much for being here, man. We'll talk soon. We'll talk soon, Danny. Take care, bro. <laughs> Good, night. Good night. Cheers.